So hello, my name is Sophie Morgan and I am a postdoctoral researcher at the Oxford Drug Discovery Institute and welcome to this um, remote UK Thames Valley Dementia Open Day. And the title of my talk today is Protein Aggregation and Parkinson's Disease. So what defines Parkinson's disease? A lot of you will be familiar with Parkinson's disease and its clinical characteristics those being arresting tremor, rigidity, postural instability and bradykinesia, which means a slowness of movement. And it is also accompanied with dementia. Um, and why Parkinson's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases are such devastating and difficult to treat diseases is because neurons are what scientists call post mitotic cells, which means once they have developed into a neuron, they can no longer create new neurons. So. Our brains are precious, not only because they make you uniquely you, but because once your neurons have gone, they cannot be replaced. However, from a pathological perspective, there are distinct characteristics that define Parkinson's disease. And these are called Lewy bodies, which are shown here, and Lewy neurites. And these have been shown to be mainly composed of a protein called alpha-synuclein. If you look closer into what these Lewy bodies contain, they're mainly contained alpha-synuclein, but this alpha-synuclein is highly aggregated into these insoluble filamentous forms. And it is thought that these aggregates are toxic to cells, and these are what cause the cells to eventually die in Parkinson's disease. So what causes Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease is a multifactorial disease. It has both environmental factors and genetic factors that contribute to the risk of developing it. But it is also a highly heterogeneous disease, which means that it is highly diverse. For example, one patient with Parkinson's disease might have a slightly different clinical presentation compared to another. And this is likely due to the diversity of the genetic environmental factors that cause the disease. So the biggest risk for developing Parkinson's disease is age. It is an age related disorder. However, there are other environmental factors that influence the development of Parkinson's disease, and these are head trauma and as well as exposure to pesticides. And on the right here, I am showing the genes that have been demonstrated to cause Parkinson's disease. And this won't mean an awful lot to you, but they're just there to show that a diverse number of genes that cause the disease. And the one that I will focus on today is the SNCA gene, which codes for alpha-synuclein, the very protein that is found in these neuronal inclusions and cause cell death. So what is alpha-synuclein? Alpha-synuclein is a brain protein and it has a unique function in helping neuronal communication or what scientists would call synaptic transmission. However, alpha-synuclein is a non-essential protein as um, it has been shown that if you remove it experimentally from the brains of rodents, there are no adverse side effects with these mice. So in other words, alpha-synuclein facilitates neuronal communication, but communication can still occur if you do not have it. So alpha-synuclein is found at these synaptic boutons, shown here enlarged, and they're located on these synaptic vesicles, and then they aid with this transmission. However, as we know from slides one and two, in disease, this alpha-synuclein forms these accumulations. So what happens is it goes from a functional soluble state into a highly insoluble aggregated state. Um, if we could understand how that happens, we could understand how the disease occurs. So what happens to alpha-synuclein? In normal conditions, it's soluble, as I previously said, and it's diffuse in the cell. So alpha-synuclein is shown here in green. However, in disease conditions, it then takes on this highly aggregated insoluble state and forms these disease and highly toxic inclusions. So what we want to try and do in the lab is to model this accumulation of alpha-synuclein so that we can study the effects it has on these cells. And what we can do is we can make alpha-synuclein accumulations in a test tube. And how we do this is we take the human alpha-synuclein gene and we put it into bacteria or E. coli that are specif specifically designed to grow protein. They will grow the protein for us and then we can harvest these bacteria and then using specialized equipment, we can then purify out that alpha-synuclein 
into a test tube. And what we end up with is alpha cyanuclein here that is soluble, but we want to make it into this aggregated filamentous state. And how we do that is by shaking the test tubes and this constant agitation at high temperatures results in the formation of these large accumulations or aggregates and what we have also termed filaments because they form these long insoluble filaments structures. And other labs have resolved the structure of these filaments and there's a little video here to show you the confirmation of how these synuclein stack. So as you can see from this video here, you've got the um, orange and blue alpha synuclein and these are individual units of synuclein and they come together and they stack in the horizontal plane as well as the height plane to form these long filaments. So what we can do is we can use the aggregates made in the test tube to model alpha synuclein aggregation in a dish in cells. And we know that if we add these aggregates to cells, the aggregates will induce the accumulation of alpha synuclein in those cells as shown by green here. And those accumulations are biologically very similar to those found in the human brain. And what we can do is find drugs that decrease this accumulation of alpha synuclein in cells. And there are drugs out there being tested currently that show promise in de decreasing this aggregation, such as this ANLI 138B here. Whereas other drugs, such as chloroquine, has the opposite effect. And we use this as a tool to measure increases and decreases in aggregation and to see what influences this accumulation of alpha synuclein. This cell model is a great tool for us though because it not only allows us to look at what influences aggregation but we can also use it to investigate how these accumulations affect cellular processes within the cell. For example, we could investigate lysosomal function and how these accumulate affect lysosomes. So lysosomes are what are called waste disposal unit of the cell. They deal with all the waste that the cell um, creates and disposes of it. So it's effectively the bin of the cell. And we can also look at what happens to the mitochondria in cells that have these accumulates of alpha synuclein. And mitochondria are called the batteries of the cell. They produce all the energy that the cell needs. And both of these, the lysosome and the mitochondria, are known to be affected in Parkinson's disease and that has been implicated through its genetics. So what we find is that alpha synuclein accumulation causes mitochondrial damage. We know that cells that have these alpha synuclein accumulations as shown in orange are also positive for mitochondrial damage signals shown in green. And these damage signals are not seen in healthy cells that do not have alpha synuclein accumulations. And these mitochondrial damage signals signal for the mitochondria to be destroyed as they are no longer functioning properly. And this is a biological process that is called mitophagy. And why this is an important process to study is because we can develop drugs that promote this mitophagy and therefore promote the removal of this damaged pool of mitochondria. And if we remove the damaged pool of mitochondria, we will then promote the biogenesis or the creation of new and healthy mitochondria. And the rationale for therapy is that if you have more healthy mitochondria, even if you have alpha sneaking accumulations within those cells, the cell will be able to still meet all the high energy demands of that cell and will hopefully keep the cell living for longer and will thus reduce cell death in Parkinson's disease. So in summary, the take home messages from my talk are that the cells of the brain develop alpha sneaking accumulations which cause the cells to die. We can model this accumulation in cells in a dish by adding aggregates made in the lab. And these alpha synuclein accumulations induce cellular damage, such as mitochondrial damage. And we can try to protect the cells from this damage by promoting the removal of those damaged mitochondria by specialised drugs. And I'd like to end just by saying that by understanding aggregation of alpha synuclein, we hope to find ways to decrease the harmful burden these accumulations place on the cells and of the brain. And I'd like to also end on saying thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Thank you to my funders, to Celgene and ARUK. And if you want to contact me on the lab, here are our Twitter links.